This might sound like a typical rant video against the government. How things are going to the dogs and all. But believe you me, that is not what we intend to do. We have some serious objections to a piece of notification that is up for public review. We would like you all to watch this video with an open mind. And if you feel like it, please do voice your opinion on the link in the description below. So, economic growth is important and so are natural resources like soil, water, minerals, air, forests, etc. But just like we tend to ignore our health and safety while doing the things we enjoy, we have been ignoring the damaging impacts on the environment while we pursue economic growth. A balance between environmental protection and economic growth is crucial. That is where the MOEFCC comes into picture. It has to ensure that all infrastructure and development projects have to be undertaken without compromising environmental safety and without causing irreversible damages to the natural resources. So the MOEFCC is like our BLA, our safety net. And how does the MOEFCC ensure this? The MOEFCC mandates that to start a new project, the project proponent has to undertake an EIA. The EIA needs to be done before the project begins to evaluate the environmental impact of the project. Only if the expert committee of the MOEFCC is convinced that there are no adverse environmental impacts does it grant an environmental clearance. The EIA process is extremely important because it is the only process which prioritizes environmental safety over economic gains. It is what ensures balance. Moreover, a prior free and informed consent of people is sought. People can ask questions about the need of the project. In this process, the project can be rejected on precautionary grounds. The values that are fundamental to the EIA process are sustainability, equity, environmental justice, transparency and accountability. It is these values that make the EIA meaningful. But, and there is always this big but, the current EIA process itself has several issues. For example, in case of large hydroelectric and irrigation projects, severe irregularities have been reported. For example, poor quality baseline data, inadequate or no impact assessment, violations that have gone unreported, etc. In fact, the MOEFCC itself has admitted that it has practically no capacity to monitor the project, leave aside achieving compliance. And as if matters weren't bad enough, we now have a new draft notification for EI. And what does this notification say? Well, on the face of it, it states that its purpose is to impose certain prohibitions and restrictions on new developmental projects so as to make the process more transparent. But does it? To begin with, the project categories have been changed so that a significant number of new developmental projects will completely escape the environmental clearance process. Secondly, cumulative impact assessment has been made non-mandatory. All projects will be assessed individually. Individual projects could have a small footprint which could be misleading. A large number of such small projects in the same region could have a much larger impact and yet that cumulative assessment is non-mandatory. Now as per the existing practice, the expert appraisal committee can ask for additional studies so as to understand the nuances of environmental impact. Such additional studies have been explicitly discouraged. Furthermore, the EAC members themselves could have severe conflict of interest. However well-meaning, these members would typically be bureaucrats, technocrats, project proponents from previous projects, but not having any environmental credential. Imagine how much faith you would have on a workplace sexual harassment committee if it had no women on it. Additionally, as per the notification, the public consultation can be cancelled owing to local situation. 
So for example, if the people are protesting against a proposed project, that itself can be used as an excuse to cancel public hearing. Isn't it a gross violation of rights? Compliance and monitoring have been further weakened. Once the EC is granted, it exists for the entire lifetime of the project without any review. Thus, if the project is found to be damaging after being operational, the environmental clearance cannot be revoked. Further, the notification implies that if there is violation of the EC process and the affected people report it, its cognizance might not be taken. <laughs> and to top it all, the MOEFCC is willing to give post facto clearance in interest of environment. All in all, the problems with the current EIA implementation plus EIA notification 2020 equal to disaster. Friends, it is important for us to raise our concerns before it is too late. A country is defined not just by its borders, but also by its people, animals, birds, trees, and so much more. It is time to do our country a small favor. <laughs>